Okay, well, we will go ahead and get started. We'd like to welcome the 2017 Honda Classic champion, Ricky Fowler. Ricky, thanks for joining us for a few minutes. Quick little anecdote, I got a chuckle outside when you're signing autographs and the woman said, welcome to Jupiter. Or, and uh, your, your comment was, well, I've actually been here for about 13 years now. So, which leads me to my first question, just some thoughts on being back here at the Honda Classic and obviously kind of a home game for you. It is. Um, after being on the road for uh, about five and a half weeks, it's nice to be sleeping in my own bed. Um, I've always enjoyed this event, one, being at home. Um, like you talked about, I've been down here for 12, almost 13 years now. And I enjoy the golf course uh, from playing junior events here and then on to you know playing the Honda. It's, it's right in front of you. It tells you what you need to do. It's, it's def a definite challenge. And uh, like I said, I've always enjoyed the challenge. So... Nice to be at home, but uh, playing a tournament this week. And just an update on wife, baby, about three months old now. If I'm not She's mistaken. just yeah, just over three months. Um, once she got to double digits or ten weeks, I started going in month talk. Um, I, I I can't get through as far as the the quick math doesn't really add up when people say hey, you know she's thirty seven weeks or let's just, just give me months or whatever so she's i i guess uh, she'd be you know 13 or 14 weeks but um she's just over three months okay that's a much easier answer yeah. <laughs> all right well with that we'll open up and take a few questions if you would just put your hand up and i'll uh, we'll get, start with tom right there hey ricky uh ricky how has uh fatherhood kind of put things in perspective i mean you, you, you're going through a, uh, a time now that uh, you're probably not happy with with the way things have gone the last couple of years but does but does that Put things in perspective and you know show where priorities are when you go through things at, at tough times yeah i mean i feel like i've always been uh good at at looking at things as far as either glass half full or understanding um you know there's a lot more to life than you know just playing golf and, and what happens out here um makes things a lot easier when you're playing well but um you know Playing poor golf doesn't mean that uh, you know you're unhappy or, or things at home are bad or anything like that. Um, you know, so things are awesome. Um, you know, wife and little one and enjoying that is definitely a big change. Um, have to be a little more efficient with time and how it's spent, um, when and how and where. Um, but definitely have enjoyed it. It was a big. Uh, it was, it was very nice to be able to have them on the road for those five and a half weeks uh, with all of us being together. Uh, it's not easy traveling with a little one, uh, hopping around houses to hotels and different stuff like that. But, um, yeah, just going through a, a learning process of, of doing things a little bit differently now. And um, talked about the golf. Yeah, definitely not where we've wanted to be, but there's at least been some highlights here and there to – keep pulling us along. Um, I'm excited about this week. I, I'm starting to feel um, a little more comfortable with some stuff. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had to work on some some big grip changes, getting a, into a, a very weak position, needed to strengthen that and, and get away um, or into a better spot. Um, so that was more of a, a mental battle, um, trusting that and moving forward. So yeah, it's, it's like I said earlier, it's nice to be home, sleeping in your own bed and uh, teeing it up at a place where I've had success. Ricky Brooks was saying he likes a, a course that challenges you and is more around par than you're winning at 20 under 25. Where do you stand on on a difficult course where you're sort of grinding more than everyone's birdieing every hole? Um, I would much prefer the, the grind and, and scores not being as low, but um, – Typically, Rib's not a course that scores are, are that low, and it's it's not like it played, you know, that easy. But uh, Joaquin decided to drive it really well, hit his irons nicely, make some putts, and uh, get up and down when he missed greens, and that's how you win at Rib. Um, it, the same thing can happen at a course like this, um, but typically it's it's not a golf course where guys really run, run away and, and shoot very low. Um, sometimes you'll see someone get off to a hot start for two days, but typically doesn't really uh, run much on the weekends or the, the score doesn't really keep going uh, further under par. Um, but it's, it's just a good test. It tests you off the tee, uh, second shots or approach shots. Um, you know, it's not like you have a bunch of scoring opportunities with par fives. Um, it kind of just, it'll wear you down. Um, 
you know, if you kind of get going the wrong direction. But um, like Brooks was talking about, it's it's a when you take it on the right way, it's a, it's a fun challenge. It tests you in, in kind of all aspects of your game, and especially when you have the standard 10 to 15 mile an hour wind, it's it's all you want. Hey, Ricky. Um, Brooks was asked earlier, um, do you think what happened last week is a death blow for the Saudi Golf League? And he made the point that not really, because that money's not going anywhere. There's no reason they can't just kick the can down the road, reform, et cetera. Uh, and I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Do you think he's right? Do you think this is something we may be hearing about for the next two years or whatever? I mean, what's your perspective on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've known those guys for, for quite a while. Um, I played with uh, Maj and, and Yasser uh, in the Pro-Am over in Abu Dhabi. Um, they love golf. Uh, they're, they're golf nerds kind of like all of us. Um, no, I, I, I don't see it going away. Um, you know, they're not scared about the situation. Um, it's been interesting to kind of learn the ins and outs of, of both sides. But, uh, yeah, it has been an a interesting week or so <laughs> these last, uh, you know, I guess, five to seven days. And can, uh, just a quick follow-up on that. Um, do you think some kind of more extreme punishment from this side of things, but as in like, you know, if you were going to sign this contract, we're going to ban you for life or something like that, do you think that could have an effect of putting an end to the sort of flirtations and dalliances that keep springing up uh, month by month? Um, yes and no. I mean, I've always, I've always looked at having competition as a good thing. Um, you know, for me, that's always how I got better uh, through, say, junior golf, through college golf, and even, you know, out here playing against the best players in the world. Um, ultimately, I think that, you know, if this, if everything kind of goes the, the right way, I think everyone comes out in a better place. Um, like I said, I think competition is a good thing. And in business, you know, whatever it may be, you're trying to always, if you're trying to be the best, you want to find ways that you can be better than your competitors. Um, so it goes through sport, business, tours, whatever it may be. So um, I just hope that everything kind of continues um, to either head the right way or, or not the wrong way, um, and we can all end up in a better place uh, in the future. Can I just ask what you mean by the right way? What does that mean here? Uh, I do, do I think the PGA Tour is the best place to play currently? Yes. Do I think it could get better? Yes. Hey, Ricky, uh, just you, you mentioned grip changes and all that fun stuff that you have to be working on. Uh, can you talk about it from your perspective, just how uh, challenging and frustrating at times it is when, you know, you've played a certain way so successfully for so long? I know you made a, a putter change recently, uh, you know, to have to, you know, rethink in a way uh, the way you go about it. Uh, it must be must be a daunting, but then, you know, satisfying once you figure things out or start to see signs that you're figuring things out. Yeah, um, I mean, the putter thing was more just kind of a, a new look, just to kind of try and change the mojo a little bit, and ultimately something where I wasn't going to have to think as much, just kind of step up, hit it, and know it was going to start online. And, um, you know, there's always little changes here and there um, when you're trying to continue to get better. Um, you know, nothing ever really stays in the, in the same spot for very long. Um, it's kind of a pendulum. You're trying to stay as close to center as possible and not get too far off. Um, you know, my left hand grip was getting a, a little too weak for how I or where I need to be to kind of swing and, and play the way I want to play. Um, so making a, a decent adjustment there is just a minor one is is enough to you know feel awkward. Um, and it was a fairly big adjustment um so it was like i said more of a mental battle to go ahead and trust that the ball was actually going to go straight and not 40 yards left ricky you've talked about the noise in the last seven to ten days uh, is there a sense of relief at all tomorrow when you can go out there and just do what you guys do and play golf for four days and not really kind of worry about uh, the noise yeah in a way i mean it's it's around, um, like we talked about. It's I don't necessarily think it's it's going away, um, but at the same time, yeah, Thursday through Sunday is typically our uh, as players where you just get to go what you love to do and go play and compete. Um, and as far as the you know like on the fans' perspective or, or people watching, 
uh, on TV or whatever it may be, um, that's all they see. So they may not necessarily see, you know, the, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays or kind of ins and outs of, of what goes on and travel and all of that. But um, Thursday to Sunday is, in a way, kind of the time you get to relax and just go play. Um, how could the PGA Tour be better? You, you said you wanted it to be to improve. Is it in, increased prize funds? What is it? Uh, no, it doesn't necessarily have to do with Bonnie. There's, I won't go into details in here, but um, um, stuff has been mentioned. Um, you know, I've I've met with Jay at times. We're gonna get together, and he's sitting down and meeting with players uh, continuously over the weeks. Um, and yeah, do I think it can be? Better, yes, but I, at the same, do believe that it is still the best place to play currently. Okay, I, I just have a follow-up on something different. Um, how has it been being part of the, the Netflix docu series? How, have you enjoyed the experience? Yeah, I have. I mean, it's uh, we're very early stages. Um, it's you know been fun to kind of be involved over the years to see it finally come and really happen. Um, you know, it was kind of a it wasn't necessarily our idea or anything like that, but to kind of be involved with some of the people that are ultimately doing it now. Um, I've only done a couple things so far since they've only been out since uh, San Diego, did some stuff at Scottsdale. Um, but I do, um, I think and I hope that it's going to bring um, some more eyes to the game of golf. Um, you know, very similar to what it's done with F1 in the U.S. F1 has been very big worldwide. I've always been an F1 fan and follower uh, growing up in motorsport. So to have people kind of in the last few years, you know, start to have a, a serious interest in following F1, I'm like, guys, this has been around forever. Um, but I'm glad they're finding out about it now. So um, hopefully it has a, a similar impact with, uh, you know, the guys out here in the game of golf. Two off topic questions, if I may. Um, when was the first one you got, and what did it feel like when you got a letter from Arnie? I actually don't remember the first. I got multiple letters from him. Um, you know, I remember getting to spend time with him. You know, back at the Sunny Hannah when um, you know played there, not being far from from Latrobe, because uh, uh, Sam, his grandson, would would play there as well. Um, got to be around him a little bit. I won a junior event at Bay Hill. Uh, through AJGA. It was the HP boys. I think that was back in maybe 06, I believe. Um, so I've, I've known Arnie, I would say at least, I want to say 06 might have been the first time I got to spend time around him. Um, so the first one wasn't a letter. It would have been a congrats at Bay Hill when I, when I won there as a, a junior golfer. Um, so yeah, to have the relationship with the, the tournament, his foundation, and ultimately with him over the years is, has been awesome. Um, yeah, we, we definitely miss him. With that letter, the first one you got, what did it feel like? I mean, was his logo on the envelope? And I mean, what did it feel like when you opened it up and read it? Um, almost a sense of like, you've made it, or kind of a, you get that validation, um, you know, from guys like Arnie or, or, or Jack, uh, someone I've got to you know know and spend a decent amount of time with down here in South Florida. But um, yeah, those the the letters from Arnie were definitely special. Like I said, I don't remember exactly when the first one was, but um, to me, the the times that I got to spend with him and be around, um, one of my greatest memories with him um, was playing in the same group in, at the Seminole Pro Member, which is upcoming Monday. Um, and got to play with him, and I remember I still remember one shot he hit. He had about sixty or seventy yards out of a fairway bunker and hit this little nipped wedge out of there. Um, still had good hands. You know what year that was? Not exactly. My guess would have been about twelve. Okay. And the other one for two weeks from now. Um, you've handled what some people call the most terrifying tee shot at TPC Sawgrass during the Players' Championship very well, obviously. To you, what's the second scariest tee shot at Sawgrass, and why? Hmm. Second scariest. Um, you, I mean, probably say 17. 
just because. Oh, that's Oh, I thought we were going 18. <laughs> okay. I'd almost say that 18 may be the – I mean, it, they can – it's a toss-up. Um, 18 is a harder tee shot. 17 may be more scary because that it's fairly easy. I mean, as far as when you look at it, the hole's not very far, and you start trying to get a little cute towards a pin, and there's water very close. But if you sat there with no pin on the green – and your only job was to hit a ball on the green, tour players are going to do that pretty much every time unless there's serious conditions. If you were to stand on 18T and your only job was to hit it in the fairway, that's still not an easy thing to do um, standing on that tee. So um, it's obviously a great design around that golf course and to have you know, kind of the two shots that can – make or break your round, be right there at the end. Um, it's it's just a great place. What makes 18 so tough, that standing on that tee? Well, because you want to turn it, but if you, you know, the bulkhead kind of makes you think that you can cover a bit more than you can. Um, you start going over any bit of water, and the cover every couple feet gets another 20 yards or so. Uh, just because of the angle that it runs on. And the trees on the right come in pretty quickly. So it's the further you hit it, the narrower it gets. Um, yeah, you can hit something you know, shorter, kind of straight out, and take your medicine in a way. But now you've got a, you know, at least a mid to long iron into a green that's you know, built more for a, a nine iron. Um, and even to those... That front section, even if you're trying to go to a right pin, you get working on that, and you can have a ball that lands on the green that goes in the water. Um, so you kind of have to decide where you're going to try and take on the hole. If you hit a good drive there with driver or three wood, you now it becomes a hole that you can play aggressively from there. Um, it's it's just a good hole wherever you're willing to take kind of that risk. You can either make it easier or harder. Ricky, J Jordan had a dip in his career, and your friendship with him, the way he's rebounded and come back now very well. Have, have you ever had a talk? Do you ever talk to him about that and the way and what it took to come back? Or would you rather just, hey, I, you know, I, I can do this on my own? Uh, no, we all, we all talk about it. I mean, Jordan and I stay in houses a lot together. Same with JT, um, Cantlay as well, uh, Duffner, and I mean, we all talk about different stuff and, you know, how guys are doing. And especially, when, you know, Jordan and I were – I was kind of going in as he was starting to come out. And um, it's it's part of golf. Um, in a way, it's it's part of life as well. Um, everyone that's played at a high level has, has gone through the ups and downs. There's no one that's ever stayed at the top. Um, it's part of it. So I'm, I'm – Clawing my way out. Um, I would have liked it to have happened a little sooner than it has, but um, you know, being there with your with your friends that have gone through it or going through it together, um, you know, I know they they have my back. I've always had their back, and um, makes it a lot easier when you have people on your side. Uh, opposite question, Ricky. You seem really well liked out here, but drive to survive. There's always a feud going on. So if you had to have one fake feud. With another player out here, who would you pick? I'm gonna pick Harry Higgs. <laughs> he what? came over for dinner last night. Well, I invited him, but I think it'd just be fun. You should play that up when he next time we, they interview. We could. <laughs> or Joel. I mean, Joel's been pretty big on there so far. But no, there's yeah, there's there's so many great guys out here, and um, it's gonna be fun to kind of see the their personalities come through, and people get to see um, people away from you know, what they just see Thursday through Sunday and just tournament golf and what the camera shows. Um, there's, like I said, there a lot of amazing people, plenty of characters, plenty of personalities. So I'm sure that'll all kind of come through as time goes. All right, Ricky, thank you for your time.